All right. So, according to Brightech, Bypass NRO does not work on 23H2 anymore. Windows 11 doesn't work. He said it right here. Simple. Anyway, another version which Microsoft have blocked is the Shift F10. When you press Shift F10 at this window, it will open up the command prompt box. From here, this was another common method that people use to bypass, which is OOBE backslash bypass NRO, all one word. You would then restart the PC, and what would happen is it would allow you to use a local account or limited account. But unfortunately, Microsoft have also blocked this method as well in the up-and-coming releases. I'm not sure why they have done it, but they are now forcing you to try to use a Microsoft account. But as you can see here, I'll just go through the process here just to show you what it's actually doing. It just takes you straight back to the Microsoft. You see right here? It says checking for updates. He's still connected to the internet. Remember back during Windows 10 installations, we would make sure to not have Ethernet to say I don't have internet. He's connected to the internet. Now, if you accidentally connect to the internet and you cannot like reinstall Windows, um, I can show you how to bypass that. So that we're gonna first disable networking and then bypass NRO. Because NRO is uh, bypassing network enrollment. That's that's what it is. So if you don't have networking, then you can't do sign in. It's that simple. Microsoft does not require it 100%. It is still possible to get around it. They know that, hey, maybe somebody's trying to set up a uh, you know, Windows machine in China, right? And if they can't get to the Microsoft sign-in page, they still need to install the computer, maybe get a VPN going, and then they can sign in, right? Like, that's entirely possible. They're not going to just brick PCs to not, you know, to, to, you know it'd be impossible to work with the internet. They still need to do that for like development purposes, right? If you're, hey, I have a new build, I'm just gonna run it up in a virtual machine. They still need to be able to like not actually sign into their real Microsoft account because there's like a security problem with the new build that they've made. So uh, offline accounts are going to remain. And in fact, this method that he's describing in this video only works if you have a Windows Pro license or if you've installed Windows with the with the Pro installer. So I'm gonna do it with Windows 11 Home. So here we go. Uh, I just sped forward a little bit. The VM's already started, but we have eight gigs for we have our we have our virtual TPM, our EFI. Uh, we got eight gig disk, and there we have Windows 11 23H2 x64 v2. Now, this actual release is from uh, December 2023. So as of this ISO, it's good. And even after, like it connects and like does a little update, this method would still work. So I'm even gonna let it do its little update. We're gonna connect the internet. Uh, my VM has ethernet it's connected to NAT so we should be able to do that but we're gonna make it even harder on ourselves we're gonna install Windows Home I just tested it out so I'm just reinstalling Windows on this VM does all this garbage come on there we go so that's it. we'll just let that run through um, so yeah if I do this, um, no, I'm not gonna do that. This seems like a bad idea. And we're installing a fresh installation. As you can see here, I'm gonna turn down his volume because I think he's too loud. Soft logging screen where you need to log in, force you to do it twice, but it log in screen you it twice, but it does basically force you. To see here, when you click skip for now, it's gonna load for like a solid few seconds as it makes a network request. Uh, force you to just... do now even if you do that command in lowercase it still does the same thing and i'm not going to bore you showing you it now there's a checking for updates on, but watch as eclipse skip for now that's literally going to take seconds to do that network request twice but it does basically force you so he's clicking it at like 55. to this window where it will take you straight back to the microsoft and that was like three seconds there's no reason why this page should take three seconds to load if it's loading this file from the local like drive this is only doing this because he still has a network connection on his virtual machine or his or his real computer i don't know what he's capturing this on um either way even with a network connection and even with windows home because he's gonna he's gonna choose setup for work for school but this is only really applicable if you're using if this is a windows pro license if you have like you know 400 dollars laptop that came with windows home right um you know the cheaper keys are windows home so um yeah, and that's always going to just immediately choose, like it's not even gonna show you this option. It's gonna say personal use and be much more stringent about setting up a Microsoft account. Set up for work or school. This has been a, a thing for a while on Windows Pro uh, that you can still just say, yeah, I'm connecting to a domain and then not actually connect to a domain. But um, I'm gonna show you the proper method to make sure you really are in there. My Windows installation is almost done. But yeah, that's that's ultimately how I dice off because he was still connected to the network. 
That's why he couldn't run bypass in a row and actually bypass this page. And then the method he shows, where he's like, you know, here, check this out. Fortunately, you can see it takes you straight back to let's add your Microsoft account and it won't let you do anything. And instead of clicking on set up personal on the sign in options, you want to click on domain join instead, which is a feature exclusive to Windows Pro. And now you'll see who's going to use this. And there you go. So, um, kind of frustrating that uh, he's done that with Windows Pro because it's still possible to do it in Windows Home. And most, like, if you buy, you know, like a $400, $300, even $200, like HP, Lenovo, Dell, whoever makes it, laptop that's running Windows, it's going to be a home license for, for that cheap of a computer, not a pro license. Uh, they'd rather buy more RAM, have a better screen, something else to put more value in that cheaper computer than a pro license like that's not a selling feature for basically anyone um i don't know why but like it's trying to restart the vm but crashing so i'm just gonna restart it manually for it and we still have our optical drive connected our 23h2 v2 uh i've disabled audio because i don't want to hear uh you know the sound effects and saying you know set up your language and all that garbage but we still have our network connection this whole time I'm, I'm never going to disconnect and this would be the same thing like say you had uh you know like you accidentally put in your wi-fi um credentials um you know we're just we're just going to leave the ethernet cable plugged in to simulate hey man i can't just like turn off my wi-fi to say i don't have internet so this, this is like worst case scenario we're literally leaving an ethernet cable attached to the machine and we're still going to be able to bypass it in a row So just give it a few moments, and this is this should still be possible um, in, a, in a number of instances because we install Windows Home. I'll show you that with Winver. So yeah. Oh, so when you run O O B E backslash bypass in a row, what you're actually doing this only works because we're in an administrative command prompt. We're in an administrative command prompt, and we're in the System32 folder. There's a folder in system 32 called OOBE and then in there it's running a batch script a, a, a command file that is uh, actually named a bypass in a row. Uh, it's just kind of been truncated to that because it's just that's the bare minimum you need to actually run that script. So if Microsoft really wanted to block bypass in a row they could just delete like that script file because guess what's in the script? The script doesn't actually do anything that significant. All the script does is it puts a key in the registry and reboot your computer and then as it's rebooting the uh the actual out of box program will see that key file or see the registry key is is changed and then just let you you know proceed with that networking so my vm is finally up let's just move this over a tiny bit as you can see we still have that drive detected come on Don't have all day, Microsoft. Okay, so this is POV, you opened your new laptop. <laughs> and here you are. You press the power button, you saw the Dell logo, and then you saw Microsoft, and boom, now you're here. So. Shift F10, if you're on a laptop, you might have to do Shift function to get your F10 to work. But here we have our command window. And the key to this is start ms hyphen settings colon. Right, so this is opening, you know, the settings window. When I click on our Ethernet or Wi-Fi, whatever we've accidentally connected to, and we're going to say advanced network, and we're going to disable it. So if you had Wi-Fi, you could also disable your, your Wi-Fi adapter through there. So we, we have disabled networking, okay? There is no networking here. Oh, so you've like closed the window, or like, let's say, let's say you did this, it's like, oh no, where'd my command prompt go? You can just alt tab back into it and get them back. So, very useful. Oh, oh man, the VM is so slow right now. Okay, we're we back, we're back. So now, we're gonna do the thing. I have not run bypass in a row yet. All I did was, yeah. So now it's like, hey man, get on Wi-Fi, get on the Ethernet, do something. And the button, there's no bypass in a row button, or, or um, you know, I don't have internet button. So we'll get back to our command window. 
Look, look, look. I'm even going to show you. LS or, or CD oob. All right, there. Too much Linux. And in here, at the top, bypass NRO.cmd. Check this out. Type bypass NRO. All this. No echo. As the registry key, as a D word. And then it reboots your computer. So we're going to run it. Uh, sorry. By bypass. And now, we're, now it's going to do that. Now it's going to apply the key, reboot the computer. So even if this key file goes missing, right, like it, they delete the command file, you can type in regedit at the uh, at your shift F10 command window. And in there, you can type in, um, you know, the uh, the key. Uh, you, could, you can just go into regedit, manually put that key in place, and reboot. Here we go. So again, we still have Ethernet connected, technically speaking, but we have disabled the network adapter in the virtual machine or you know, your Wi-Fi chip, whatever you've got. Wow, I don't have internet. That's true. I don't have internet. And limited setup. And who's going to use this device? In your name. Notice it doesn't say email. So I say offline. Wow. And just just to show again, if I do like a an IP config, there's nothing because we're not connected to it because I disabled the network device. So we're gonna we're gonna blaze through the rest of the setup as fast as we can. So I'm gonna I'm gonna accelerate the video now, and once we get to the desktop, uh, I'll meet you back. All right, here we are. We're at the desktop. So, we're just going to open our settings, click on networking, not connected, where's my ethernet, where's my Wi-Fi? Advanced, enable it. Ethernet, good moment, not connected, connected, yippee, new private window. Look at that, we're on the internet, yippee. And we are back at it again, we can now do whatever we need to do. Um, let me do, oop, I ran it on my host. I want to run it here. Run, WinVer, Windows 11 Home, License to, Offline. Let's take another look, Settings. Offline, a local account. Sign in with Microsoft, sign in with Microsoft. Okay. Uh, one thing is very important. If you just got a shiny new laptop or desktop, um, Part of the reason they want they, they are very insistent on requiring the one the uh, the sign in is so that your BitLocker key gets backed up because on Windows um, Home they now have that as like a more generalized feature just called device encryption. So double check privacy and security that you don't have device encryption option there. The other thing you can do is with your PowerShell. Wait, why don't I have Windows Terminal? That's weird. I should have I should have Windows Terminal here. Okay, you can say uh, manage hyphen BDE status fully decrypted protection off right if you see it where it's like ready to set up or, or something that's not fully decrypted protection off you need to either disable it or you need to use um, in control control panel you would click on system and security and there's a there'd be your bit locker option like about here and then you can back up your recovery key um, you know to like you can actually like print it out or save it to a file um, whatever you need to do so you can still have, um, you know, effectively free BitLocker on Windows Home. Uh, so that, that's the main reason. If you do this, please be careful because most new machines are going to be encrypted by default. And if you have like motherboard failure, you need to get that repaired. You didn't back up your files beforehand. Um, it's encrypted by default and you can't just, it's not encrypted with a password. It's encrypted with, you know, this obscenely long key. So please make sure that you disable device encryption um, or at least back up the key. Um, and then you can also confirm if there is an encryption or not uh, with the conversion status or the protection status is there. So keep an eye on that, please. Um, I've seen too many people, like, uh, in fact, I've seen, like, coworkers, like, bypass in a row, but then they don't actually, like, decrypt the drive. So if, some, if something were to happen where, like, the motherboard doesn't work anymore, or even worst case, like, you have BIOS updates, which will have BitLocker fail. Right, 
uh, where, where like it didn't properly communicate to BitLocker to disable. So it does a BIOS update. A BIOS update is, is an event that can be detected by BitLocker and it can lock you out. And if you never big, backed up your key, you're gone because you know they expect that you're logged in with a Microsoft account so that you can just go, go online to Microsoft, uh, log in and get your BitLocker key through there. So since you're not connected to a Microsoft account, uh, BitLocker or any other device encryption is in your hands now. Uh, you have to do that. You have to disable it or back up your key. You can't just do nothing. You need to do something with BitLocker if it's enabled. So on, the, on this VM, I didn't have that configured. Um, but if you you know have pre-built, uh, you know like like a, a new laptop, new desktop that you didn't install Windows on yourself, it's very likely that it has built-in device encryption. It's part of why the TPM2 requirement is a thing. So. Let's recap. We are running on. Uh, yeah, so virtual machine, yes. And uh, we have our Ethernet back. And notice, I never came up here and disconnected networking. The, uh, the machine stayed connected to the Ethernet the whole time. So this will work no matter what kind of networking situation you got. And that's, that's the way it is. So thank you for your patience. Um, <laughs> damn it, Microsoft. <laughs> anyway. So bypass in a row still does work in 23H2. And his method here, which requires setup for work or school, this is a Windows Pro feature. So this wouldn't even work for all users. So I'm gonna get this video uh, trimmed up, cut up, and uh, uploaded. See you later.